Hello everyone and welcome to 6++, a wargaming channel dedicated to scratching your competitive and tactical 40k itch. Now here in the UK we are in the midst of a lockdown which means that there's not much 40k going on, which theoretically means no more battle reports for the time being. However, I've got quite the itch to scratch so what I've decided to do is get some reps in and share my experiences with you all. In terms of what you can expect from this battle report, they're designed to be quicker. In terms of the editing, it's still going to be high quality, but it's not going to have as many bells and whistles on it. And in terms of the models, there will, I'm afraid to say, occasionally be grey plastic. Today we have got my custodies against my Necrons. So uh, let's have a quick look at those lists. So starting off with the custodies then, we're going to be shadow keepers because of the stratagem. I think it's a really efficient and effective stratagem. We're going to kick off with a patrol detachment which has got a shield captain on bike. But not just any shield captain on bike, we're going to make him really hard to kill. So we have got the 3 plus plus um, invulnerable reroll charges bike relic. We have got um, captain commander 1 CP to give him an extra 2 wounds. Warlord trait, 5++, plus plus plus, okay, for the feel no pain. Um, all those things combined make him a tough nut to crack. He's going to be a nuisance on any objectives. Then I've got um, a blob of five um, custody guards, sword and board. Very hard to kill. Um, they're just there to hold an objective and just last those five turns in reality. Um, then we move on to the vanguard where the meat and bones is. So, Trajan Valorus. He's not in there for any special reason other than a free 3 CP, so um, that's basically his point. We've got the minus one to hit banner, that's always useful, but he's especially there for the homing strap because of course I've got two units of terminators, six man blobs. So unit one starts on the board and then unleashes the lions turn one, and then that's six obsec mini characters running around being a nuisance. Turn two, the main blob drops down near the banner usually, um, using Trajan Valoris' thing to stop them from it from costing 3 CP. They get any sort of defensive buffs you want on them and just causing a lot of havoc in the middle of the board, that's kind of the goal. I have got a palace, still trying it. Um, I think they're really cool, I think they're useful. Um, yeah, it, I, it does switch on the enemy heavy weapons, which is a bit of an issue, but at 95 points, sit on an objective can be an issue for the opponent, can harass, tie things up. And then finally, Terry is back. Um, due to points, I've actually given him the even better gun, the one, I can't remember what it's called, but the one where you can fire um, big shots or little shots. Because um, ordinarily, I would just go for the two damage. Um, that is proxied, but no, not to worry. So we now have the Necrons. Um, Looking for a more close combat theme today. Um, the idea is once again smother the board, be a nuisance with all the um, irritating units such as scarabs, but then have a bit of close combat punch in the army. So that's what we're going for. We'll see how it works. The whole army is obsec and six inch pregame move. I just just simply the best in my opinion. It's split into an outrider detachment so I could get all the scarabs and that sort of thing in and then we've also got a patrol. So for HQ I have got um, three of them. I've got two chronomancers and a technomancer and the technomancer is there because he has taken a canoptic control node and also he has rights of reanimation to, so he will generally be trying to stick near not only the um, the uh, canoptic units, but also the um, infantry unit that I've got in the army. The chronomancers again are there to be putting out that five up in van to um, either the scarabs or the warriors, whoever kind of needs it at the time. So I have got a, it's an 18 man blob just due to points. Um, so 18 warriors, they've all got the short range shot. I think that um, if they're a unit that's trying to stick in the middle, um, I've also got a Val of Darkness in the list as a relic. I just think that's probably the best um, weapon. I, I think it probably is. So I'm going to give all 18 of those that. I have got with me the Void Dragon. 
I'm excited to see what he can do. He's got some vehicle targets. Obviously, he is a big issue for Custodes because he's got a stratagem to cut straight through in run saves. Um, Custodes are going to have trouble dealing with him. So I'm excited to see how that kind of goes with them. I've then got Scarabs. All about the Scarabs. I think they're awesome. I love them to pieces. Um, and I will always try and include them in my lists. Um, then in terms of close combat punch, two units of race... Five man each. Uh, mm, Wraiths never hit as hard as you think they should. They are quite obstinate. They are quite hard to kill. They're a distraction card effects. Um, and then I've got some Scorpet Destroyers. Um, a five man and a four man. That's just because I only own nine. To round it out, I've got two units of two Cryptothrills. They're in there to play the mission. You know, get that engagement all fronts in the corners. Um, deploy Scramblers. All those sorts of things. I've got a Spider. Um, with that many scarabs, a spider is very useful. Um, he's going to help to bring back um, some scarabs every turn. Um, he's a bit useful in combat as well. Enough of the chit chat. Let's now get into the matchup. So, in terms of the matchup, okay, you turn up to the table, you look at your opponent's army. You've got to be thinking, where are my advantages? Where are my disadvantages? So, from the Necron player's perspective, I'm thinking I'm okay in this situation. I know I've got the Catan, he's going to be able to fire off mortal wounds. He's going to be able to ignore invulnerable saves. He's going to be hard to deal with because there's Necrodermis. My whole army is obsec, which actually helps me counter the fact that they're all obsec because I just outnumber him on all the objectives. So I'm already thinking I'm playing the mission pretty well. Um, then from the custody side, I'm thinking, oh, this is definitely a tricky situation. That Catan's going to be hard to deal with. I don't get to use my strength of being all obsec. So how am I going to tackle that? Um, at the moment, I'm thinking the Necrons are probably favoured because of the reasons I've just said. Um, I'm excited to see what happens. I could be really wrong, but I would predict quite a strong Necron victory. I actually asked some people um, what they thought, and so far, on average, the predicted score is 71.57 in favour of the Necrons. So let's see how close the crowd can be really. So today's mission is Battle Lines. Um, it's a take and hold mission with just four objectives, um, as you can see from uh, the map. For the all important secondaries, let's start off with the custodies. We have gone for, first of all, engage in all fronts. Um, I've chosen that because um, I can unleash the lines and then get my unit in all the corners um, and just try and attack from different angles. So I think that should be a consistent two, maybe even sometimes three a turn there. Uh, I've gone for while we stand we fight because that means I can pick the two Terminator Blobs and Terry. Now I don't think my opponent has a great chance of dealing with um, Terry because we don't have that sort of shooting. Um, then the two Terminator blobs, well, one of them's going to have all the buffs in the world on it, and the other one is going to be six individual models who I can just run and hide. Um, so I think that is, there's a good chance of scoring 10 points at potentially even 15. The final one was a trickier decision. I decided to go for either um, kill more or deploy scramblers. Now, the kill more is a risky one because... Actually, as I said, I don't know how impressive the Custodes are going to be at killing Necrons. It's hard to say. Let's deploy sc Scramblers. Hopefully, with the um, split-up Terminators, should be a fairly safe bet. Um, they only need to get, you know, whatever, 24 inches up the board into the enemy deployment to get that final one. So, um, I think we should be okay for that. So, for the Necrons then, um, I think... Having picked both, the Necrons probably do have the better secondaries. Um, so, first of all, I've chosen the mission-specific one, Vital Ground. Um, I'm going to get points if I hold the objective in their deployment zone, but more importantly, the two on either, one on each flank. Um, as I've said previously, I have all obsec, and I out-obsec my opponent. 
Um, all I need to do is split my force in half on both those objectives and I'm just going to outnumber them and can try and turn it into a slog fest. So I think that's quite an easy objective to keep ticking along. And then going to couple that and a bit of a combo move um, with Treasure of Aeons and ne Necron specific one. Tried it before, didn't work. It works beautifully for this particular um, map because my opponent has to pick three objectives and I score points for holding them. There's only four on the board, so two of them have got to be in the midfield. It's kind of a no-brainer as a Necron player if you're planning on trying to hold the objectives at all. So, yeah, I'm feeling pretty confident about that. And finally, I went for Deploy Scramblers. Um, I've got the Crypto Thralls there um, to kind of get that done for me. I think that should be fine um, as well. So, all in all... I think it's quite an interesting setup, but I think the Necrons have probably got the better choices in terms of secondaries. So here we go. Deployment is complete. Um, the Custodies won the roll-off, um, so they put down the first unit. As you can see, they haven't got many compared to all of the Necrons. So in terms of the custodies, um, we've got those off the board um, and then these shield um, for sword and board guys are, they're actually underneath. I've just put them out so I can see them. And then they've got the shield captain there and their goal is obviously gonna be attacking down that flank. And then in terms of the middle, we have got strong core of the terminators the characters and the palace and that is the entire army so obviously we don't really want to split up too much but we do need to have the option to make a play on both of the middle field objectives um, and obviously we need to try and move up for engagement on front too from the necron side we had quite a lot more to deploy um, so we've gone for a strong center um, all my buffing is all in the middle. So we've got our scarabs, we've got the wraiths, everything's around here. Um, and then I've also got my technomancer and my chronomancers ready. So we just got lots of buffing. Um, the Scorpet destroyers, because they don't really benefit from anything, are on the flanks. And the goal will be for the scarabs to go be a pain on the objectives and then the other stuff just to come up behind and shoot and kill off the custodies. And it's going to be a really nice, easy victory in theory so with all that in mind let's do the first turn roll off okay so the captains have met in the middle they've done the handshake and now it's time for the first roll of the game who gets to go first so the custodies roll a two and the necrons roll a five, which means under the new rules, Necrons now go first. So that is the Necrons movement phase complete, and in fact their actual whole turn, because they haven't really got any shooting. So let's have a look. Um, the plan's pretty simple for the Crons in his first turn, it's just about, you know, taking over the board as best they can. Obviously they had a six inch pre-game move, um, and then also their normal move, so that's why we've got so far up, you know, when you've got Scarabs moving 16 plus in advance, it's pretty tasty. Um, so, down on the left flank, we've got the Scarabs obviously up there. They could be further up, but we want to try and make a charge difficult. Um, the Telemon actually is ranged, so they're all measured out, so that all of his shots can hit both objectives wherever you are, so there's no hiding from the Telemon shooting, so... Might as well just hold back here. And um, they've got a five up in one from the Chronomancer, as does the um, six man squad over um, here, who are also on that objective. As you can see, the destroyers have moved up on either either flank just behind. Then everything else is in the middle, really, just kind of holding position. We've got a race touching this objective for the start of next turn. Uh, Katan is hiding, so Terry can't see him. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's shaping up to be an interesting game because as a Custodes player, I'd be thinking, man, that's quite a lot to chew through. Um, there was no um, deploying of Scramblers because I think I rolled a one on the advance for the Warriors, so I didn't get far enough ahead, so I'll have to do it next turn. But there's no real rush because, you know, this game isn't really about killing. It's just about playing the mission well and um, saying, come on in Custodes, try and chew through me if you can. 
and uh, they've certainly got a job on their hands. So um, the scores, um, it's neither army is battle ready, so we're just it's just 3 0 um, because of Treasure of Aeons for the two on the flanks because that's what we were chosen by the Custodes player. Because obviously, you wouldn't choose your opponent's home field objective to be that. Um, and then uh, the mission specific one is scored um, at the beginning or end of your command phase, so that won't be for till next turn. So the custodians have got a turn to try and kill some scarabs, basically. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's the turn. Okay, so the mic didn't record whilst I was um, filming, so I'm going to talk over it and pretend I am in the movement and I'm going to talk over the camera. So the custodians had to make a decision what play were they going to make. Um, it was an interesting one. The first thing I had to decide was do the Alaris Terminators unleash the lions or not? Now, actually, I wanted to make the most of their firepower, so I decided not to. Was this the right move or not? Only time will tell. But basically, because of their blast shots, they could put a lot of shooting into nine scarabs with no five up in one and try and clear them out. If they were to do that, that's going to be really, really helpful. So therefore, that was the plan. They were going to shoot into there with all their shots. I was going to do a stratagem as well um, and to double their rapid fire shots. And then that would hopefully take them out. The palace had dropped down on the right hand side and he had lined up the mighty Void Dragon trying to get away those three wounds, just chip damage so that that can help me out further on down the line when I can kill him with shooting and combat. But until I take away those first three wounds, I'm not going to be able to kill him in one phase. Moving over to the left hand flank. There were six five up invulnerable scarabs and they were going to die. So um, I've moved up the custody sword and board and the shield captain and they were going to try and make that charge. Plus Terry shooting into them as well. Hopefully I'd be able to deal with that. And if that came off, then I'd be knocking him off of that objective, which would be quite a big deal. I now do lots more talking and I have absolutely no idea what I'm saying, so we will end it there. All right, we're approaching the end of the shooting phase. Um, it's been oh, it's been exciting, guys. If only I could have filmed it all. So we started off over here um, and these guys did absolutely nothing shooting into the Scarab base. And then Terry opened up and my word was he efficient. He barely missed, he barely failed to wound. These scarabs and their invun, they made over 50% of their 5 up invun saves quite easily, so hardly anything's died. So the Alaris were like, Look, big dreadnought dude, this is how you do it. Spent one CP to double their rapid fire, and they unleashed everything into the middle group of scarabs, who, as you can see, are no longer there because literally, like to the die, killed the scarabs. Because um, obviously Scarabs didn't get any save against their shooting. Um, so yeah, with they did literally 36 um, wounds. So that was pretty brutal. Although as I say that, I just suddenly realised that's not true because each of the guns were too damaged from the axe. So actually they got completely overkilled. Ignore me. Um, but yeah, so they've done a job. They've taken out quite a useful unit for the, for the enemy. They're obviously going to have to withstand a charge or two next turn but there we go and now it's time for the palace because we want to see some shooting um, I looked at the maps behind whether I should do the six shots or the two shots and I should do the two shots <laughs> simple as that so he's going to put two shots into the void dragon so we are twos re-rolling ones okay so both hit and then he's toughness seven and we're strength seven so fours re-rolling ones We've got one through there. I am going to spend a CP to reroll that and fail it. So there is one save to make for the Void Dragon, otherwise, he takes his three wounds for the phase. So he's got a um, four up invulnerable, which he makes. So the palace does nothing against the Void Dragon. 
the charge phase up next and then we will do some combat and I'll let you know how it goes because there's not going to be much. It's all actions go at the end of the charge phase. So we rolled box cards for the shield captain so he made it in nice and easily. Then the five um, custody guard rolled a four, they needed a nine. We rolled it again with a CP. All right, it was box cards. So the scarabs suddenly are looking a bit worried. So I'll do that combat and then I'll give you a roundup of the end of the turn. All right, that is the end of the turn as you can see. They made short work of those remaining scarabs, so that's pretty useful from the custodies because they've now taken them off the objective and they've planted two very hard to kill units onto an objective. On top of that, as the custodies, they have managed to deal with a lot of the nuisance units from the opposition. So all of a sudden, it's looking a bit pretty. Okay, the Necrons are looking to retaliate now. They've lost many of their dear beloved Scarabs and they mean business in return. So they are now going to bring out the most of their um, close combat might and we'll see how it goes. Um, so on the left flank, we just really consolidated this objective, as you can see. Um, in the mid board, these um, warriors have deployed Scramblers in the middle. Okay, so they won't be able to shoot, but that's done the middle of the board now. Um, the scarabs here are just sitting pretty. The destroyers have weaved their way through for a third turn three charge. The void dragons getting ready to do some mortal wounds and then some more mortal wounds and then some shooting and then some combat. Oh, it's going to be delicious. Um, the wraiths are pushed up towards the middle to try and finish off any terminators that are still around once the Void Dragon's done with him. And then over here, we've got the Destroyers and the um, Wraiths, and they're gonna go into those um, boys with the shield, and we're gonna try and break through these, his three up in Vun, and then hopefully take over that objective at the end of the turn. Um, so yeah, oh, it's shaping up to be a big turn already, turn two. I think Necron's kind of had to go for it because that's how the Custodes win. They pull out a lead and then they gradually just all die off and then it's can the opponent catch up. But if the Necrons can kind of hold their own in terms of the points, then they should have enough to see it through at the end. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting. Um, obviously, I would now go, because we're in the movement phase, I'd go straight on to the um, Catan... Um, powers, but I um, can't remember what they do or anything, so I'm going to stop and then I'll, I might roll for it because it's the first time and show you the rolls because it's the first time he's ever been used on camera, I've ever used him and I'm excited. It's time. He's picked his target. Let's see what he can do. So we're going to kick off with um, the one, the power that he's got, which is uh, the one I chose, and if I was in a tournament, I think I'd probably take this one, which was Sky of the Falling Stars. So, um, I'm just going to roll here. I pick three units um, within 24 inches, um, and then I'm trying to roll under the amount of models in that unit. Now, obviously, you may have noticed that um, there's not many of those for the Custodies, so all I can do is pick the... Um, Storm Shield Squad and the Terminator Squad. Now actually maybe a better plan would have been to spend a CP to swap out a Satan Power um, and choose a different one for this game. Um, I've not done that, but hey -o. Anyway, so we'll start with the Terminator, so there's six in there, so I need to roll a one to five and I'll take D3 Mortal Wounds. I've rolled a six, <laughs> so uh, no Mortal Wounds to them. And then I need to roll under a five for the um, custody guard. And I roll a five. So there you go, that's impressive. So, so far he's done literally nothing. So now let's move on to um, the Voltaic Storm. So that's picking an enemy unit within 18. And um, so that's gonna be um, D3 mortal wounds on a two up. So here we are. I've rolled a five. So Terminator is going to take D3 mortal wounds for three. So take three mortal wounds. Um, 
and then we'll just see if we ignore those because we oh no it's not psychic phase can't ignore them ignore me um now that was pretty disgraceful and appalling so at this point i'm now going to spend one cp to enable me to use an extra power okay but i have to roll it on the dice chart so um i rolled a two which is times arrow so let's have a look times arrow so one enemy unit with an 18 that would be the terminators if a roll equals to or exceeds the wounds characteristic i'm just going to kill a model it's exciting so on a five or a six terminator is slain that's a one okay so uh, what we're saying is mr void dragon You've not done anything, have you? Okay, so Mr. Void Dragon's feeling pretty embarrassed um, right now. So we're going to go straight on to the shooting phase. And he's going to say, look, you know, guys, I have got it in me. I, I can do something. Watch this. So he's going to fire his Spear of the Void Dragon. He can't get any good angles to shoot more than one person, unfortunately. Um, so he's just going to shoot his one shot into the Terminators. So we're hitting on a two, which is a hit. Um, and then it says, I'm going to draw a straight line, but that's irrelevant. And then I make a wound roll. So strength nine, toughness five. So three to wound. And that's a five, it's gone through guys. Isn't that exciting? Minus four AP. So the Terminator is gonna have to make a um, four up in vulnerable save which he does do. So, hmm, hmm. Okay, so we had the shooting phase and we had two um, entropic lances to fire into the Terminators and um, they both missed. So that was good. And now we're in the charge phase. Um, so as you can see, they have all gone in over there straight into the three up in vulnerable custody guarding and try and tromp through them. Now, custody players can hear you shouting at the screen, do it, do it. This is of course Tanglefoot time. So um, they can't Tanglefoot the Void Dragon because um, he flies, but they can Tanglefoot the Wraiths who have fly-like rules but don't actually fly. So. Um, they've currently got a 5 inch charge. By spending 1 CP, here we go. Rolled a 4, so they've now got a 9 inch charge. Oh, that's gross. That is gross. Um, so, we're going to start off with the um, wraiths charging in. Now, this is why. Because if I charge in with the Void Dragon, um, then actually they might overwatch into him, take off the three wounds, and then in combat do another three wounds, and suddenly he's only got three wounds left, and I can polish that off in the next turn. So I don't want to risk that, so we're going to go in with the wraiths first. Um, I will spend a CP, I think, to overwatch, and I'm going to try and kill as many wraiths as I can on the charge, um, so I can make them overwatch on fives. Um, so I'll, but I'll do that off camera. For now though, so I will spend one CP from the Custodes to um, Overwatch. The race have now got a nine inch charge. Oh, here we go. Oh, it's a seven. It's a seven. Oh. Do I CP reroll that, guys? What do you think? The thing is, now, Here's a little thing. So you tell me, just can ignore AP 1 and 2. Wraiths are AP 2. So, well, I think they are. Let me just double check that. They used to be. So if they are, that means the race are basically going to do nothing in combat. Going the wrong way. So therefore, it would make sense not to re-roll it. So let's just double check. Um, AP minus 2, yeah. So you know what, I don't actually want to risk it. I'm just going to leave it up to the Void Dragon because, you know, he's clearly such a powerhouse. Um, not to worry, so that they will get overwatched in a minute. I'll let you know how that goes. But now it's time for the Void Dragon. Um, and he's going to go for his cheeky six-inch charge. And that's a four. <laughs> 
So I'll be CP rolling that one. Here we go. Come on the six. Oh, it's a seven. We're okay. So I'm going to move him in. I'm going to do the overwatch. Um, and then I think I will do the combat over here off camera because it's probably not that interesting. And then obviously the super exciting Void Dragon who will do something. I'll put that on camera. Oh wow, the action is hotting up in here and I don't just mean because all the lights are on. Over here, as you can see, it's been quite brutal. So um, the race managed to kill um, one custody guard. The custodies then interrupted for one CP because they're by an objective and killed one destroyer and left one on one wound. The destroyers then smashed into them and killed a further two. So yeah, so we lost three guys there to obviously a lot of close combat attacks. Um, no other stratagem to spend apart from um, minus one to the wound roll from the destroyers because that actually had quite a big impact. But it is the moment of truth. It's the moment you're all waiting for. I know the Void Dragon, he's, he's warmed up. He's fully warm now. He's ready to do his thing. The um, Entropic Strike for 2CP has been enacted. So no invulnerable saves for you, Mr. Terminator. So let's see what he can do now. I didn't interrupt with the Terminators because doing just three damage to him was an absolute waste of time. Um, so that's why I didn't do it. So five attacks, guys. Here we go. We hit three of the times. Oh my god. Okay. And now we are strength. He checks. Strength plus three. Strength nine. So that's going to be threes to wound. Two go through. There's going to be six up armor saves. I made one. So that means it's d6 damage. However, one of them is on one wound. So uh, let's roll for the d6 damage. Two. Wow. You can stop shouting at the screen. I did remember the tail afterwards. Okay, I know he has a tail. He did one wound to a Terminator. <sighs> and then the Terminator's hit back. And obviously he can only take three wounds. But just so you are aware, I did roll it all out. And those five Terminators did do 22 damage to the Void Dragon. Obviously only three of it counts, but uh, yeah, turn made a pretty beastie. So, summarise the turn. That was not very good. Um, yeah, I actually went for a walk just to stretch the legs before I filmed this turn. And I was thinking, oh, that Void Dragon is going to take out that whole unit by himself. Hmm. So, actually, Warhammer is very much a game of momentum. And suddenly the momentum... Feels like it could be shifting to the Custodies. They've only lost one Terminator. Sure, their right flank is a bit dodgy, so that means the rest of the Terminators are probably going to have to come in and try and deal with all that. But I don't know, guys. This has suddenly got very interesting. Uh, we'll stop the video and type a comment. End of Battle Round 2. What do you think? Who's in the Ascendancy? Okay, so custodies have, oh, don't know why I've gone husky. <laughs> um, so custodies have had their movement phase. Um, what is the plan? Well, it's been quite a while off camera, me trying to conjure something up here to really keep, of that, keep going with that momentum. Um, so let's have a look. Trixie play, search Trixie play. Terminators, you'll see that they're a bit split up now. That's because I unleashed the lion straight away and uh, started my movement phase. So what that did was it left suddenly some units in combat with the Void Dragon and some who were outside of engagement range. Suddenly they were just their own unit to get to go and do what they like. And the idea was that then I could start go off and do deploy scramblers, etc. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work like that. Um, and <laughs> I'm now really struggling to do deploy scramblers. I have an idea of how I can achieve the full three different categories, but uh, it uh, basically involves me doing no more stratagems and then 
and next turn unleashing the lines with the other Terminator blob and then just hot footing it down the pitch with uh, uh, one or two of them so uh, we'll see how that goes but yeah so what I did was the three that were in combat fell back one's come back here he will deploy in the end deployment zone at some point the other two formed a roadblock these two um, who actually weren't in combat um, because of they were now outside of that inch um, are ready to charge in so that they can shoot into the void dragon do the three wounds charge in hopefully try and get through those three wounds and kill him so that's the goal um, the palace has come all the way over here he's going to be a sneaky boy he's going to shoot he's going to try and kill the tomb spider okay knock them off that objective very naughty and then he is going to charge into the scarabs and if i hopefully roll big enough I can jump over the scarabs, be in that board quarter, and get an extra point for um, engaging on fronts. See? Isn't that clever? Um, over here, um, the Terminators have dropped in. Trajan powered up and gave me free 3 CP. And they're going to charge in and chop up the Scorpet Destroyers. Um, and then the because they really don't care about the race, um, particularly. Um, and then the shield captain's over there. He's going to start just chopping up characters um, and then probably fly off over to the um, backfield objective in future turns. So, yeah, got a bit of a plan coming together, guys. Let me know if you think that I should have done anything different. Always interested to hear. Um, that's the whole point of these sorts of video series. Keep putting yourself in my position what would you have done which how would you have played it um but yeah let's let's see i'm gonna there's no real exciting shooting um well, one thing i could have done was if possible i probably would have um uh fallen back with the custody guard there so that the terminators could shoot in but unfortunately um as you can see they're proper trapped so i couldn't do that so I don't think they're going to get to redo any shooting, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I'm going to do the shooting off camera um, and then I'll come back um, with a recap, probably in the um, fight phase. OK, so we've got a little summary of the shooting phase. Um, as predicted, nothing too exciting. All my shooting whiffed into the Void Dragon, so Terry had to do his thing. So Terry did do the three wounds and then he also killed a wraith um, because if you remember I was going to overwatch last time and I failed to kill a wraith in overwatch I did two wounds or something with it. Um, the palace just went super powered and just went Doof! bye bye spider um, and the shield captain then promptly failed with everything trying to kill so uh, that wasn't ideal. All the other shooting as I said didn't really do anything at all I think I killed one um, Scorp oh, yeah, killed the Scorpet Destroyer on one wound with the pistols from the um, Sword on Board guides. Um, so I've just done charge phase. The Palace um, got a big enough charge, so he's over there. Um, these two guys are in there. Um, Shield Captain's going to try and uh, make up for his embarrassing shooting and kill both of those characters um, by splitting his attacks. Um, and then the Terminators are coming here against the Wraiths and Destroyers. It's looking promising for the um, for the custodies, actually, I think. Um, so let's see um, if we can kill a god. Okay, so the fight phase. This is my thought process. Um, got to try and kill the Catan. Um, this is my prime opportunity to do it. So I'm going to start off with the Custody Terminator with three wounds. Here's why. If I don't kill him, then presumably the Necron player will interrupt and try and kill the remaining Terminator. Well, I want that remaining Terminator to be the one with the full four wounds, okay? Um, I think that's it. If, the, if he does end up dying to this one Terminator, then the Necron player will probably interrupt with um, the Destroyers or the Wraiths over there and try and kill some Terminators. But that's not particularly a big deal. So, um, I'm not going to film that combat over there. I'm just going to film this bit here. So... <gasps> Let's see how it goes. So we have got Mr. Three Wound Terminator. Can he go big? Four attacks. Not re-rolling ones. Don't need to. Threes to wound. 
That's three go through. So we've got three, four up in vulnerables. Two have gone through. Two have gone through. It's got to be CP'd, hasn't it? It's got to be CP'd. Yeah, I can hear you shouting at the TV right now. Um, right, so we'll spend a CP. Four up in vulnerable. It's saved. It's saved. Right, so that's one CP spent. Now I'm going to drop two to try and um, interrupt. And can he kill him? Well, wow, five attacks. Hitting on twos. Four hit. Um, wounding on threes. I didn't do the ignore in one thing. Oh well, doesn't matter. Um, two go through. Two four up in vulnerables. Oh, he's made them both. He's rather six and a five. Oh, should have ignored the um, the invulnerable. Oh. oh dear. Right. Well, let's see whilst we're on camera if the other custodian terminator can kill him. Hope is not yet lost. This could be still a significant moment. Here we go. Go on, Mr. Beefed Up Terminator. Four, four wounds. Right, so all the hits. Threes, two, and... Oh, I just forgot the tail again. Oh, let's go back. Got to do the tail as well. Always keep forgetting the tail, guys. Well, it's got one attack, so that's irrelevant. It hits... It doesn't wound. Okay, let's go back to the actual action. All right, so we had four hits. Threes to wound against the Void Dragon. Two go through. That's two, four up in vulnerable saves. Can't re-roll any of them. He's failed one. D3 damage, so on a five or a six, he dies. It's a one. Which he'll just get back next turn. Oh, wow, wasn't that exciting, eh? You can feel the tension. Right, I'm going to do these off camera and then we shall see what is left standing. Right, the turn is over. So after all the drama um, over here, um, just to fill you in on what else happened, um, the Terminators killed just one Wraith, but they did finish off all the Scorpec Destroyers. Custody, Shield Captain failed to kill <laughs> either of those two characters by splitting his attacks. Whoops. Um, the Scarabs did four wounds to the palace, mainly because the palace failed every single one of his saves. Um, and yeah, other than that, pretty uneventful. So as you can see from the score, there's a bit of an advantage to the Necrons. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a really interesting game now. So let's see what happens in Necron turn three. Okay, the uh, movement phase of the Necrons is complete for turn three. Um, so let's have a quick chat through the plan. Um, so if we look over here, you'll see that now the painted race in the background they've come from the middle of the board over and the goal is we're just trying to tie up those terminators so they can't get anywhere near deploying scramblers into the end zone or the deployment zone even um they have stayed here and this is for why hopefully the shield captain won't kill them both as long as he doesn't then that means that these guys can survive on this objective because otherwise um, I won't be able to deploy scramblers there because um, I'm going to deploy scramblers this turn up at the far end um, as you can see there over there hidden away um, and the only way these guys can die um, is if the shield captain can kill them. So hopefully the shield captain isn't able to kill them. Um, Void Dragon has run away and hidden because that's what he does. He's a waste of space. I'm joking. Hopefully he will do something next turn. Um, but he's uh, with only three wounds left, he's obviously endangered, endangered at the moment. So uh, yes, there's that. Um, Necrons, uh, Scarab's just going to stand here and see if they can get lucky again and kill the palace. 
Um, as I said, these guys are here. Um, the destroyers have moved up. They're going to start making some charges across to the middle. The warriors have formed a firing line um, and are going to shoot into um, the terminators and start polishing off some of them. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the plan. Um, I'm not going to film any of this turn in terms of the action simply because I don't think there's anything too exciting. So I will um, roll it all up and then I'll get back to you at the end of the turn to fill you in on the exciting details. Oh, what a turn. If only we were filming all of it. Um, so what happened? Well, shooting. Um, these guys spent a CP to try and kill... Um, some Alaris by having auto wounding sixes on their guns and they did absolutely nothing really just the Alaris made literally every four up in Von pretty much by and two um, that was in shooting they went to the charge phase so I thought oh I'd be sneaky here so these guys charged into the front um, terminators um, and they're just trying to wrap them up really and just stop them from um, being able to go and deploy those scramblers and I made a bit of a risky decision with these guys. I thought, you know what, I've got an easy charge here, but I'm going to try and get in over here and then really hold them up and kill them. And then I'm in a really solid position. I failed the charge and then I rerolled it and failed it again. So yeah, that backfired. Um, moving into the combat phase um, over here, Nothing happened. I rolled ridiculously well for reanimation rerolls, um, and basically one warrior died from um, the two terminators. Um, you'll see here the palace is no more. That's because I used the stratagem to explode a scarab base, did flat three mortal wounds to the palace, and then all they had to do was get through one wound to kill it. So that is now dead. Um, the plan to hold up the shield captain backfired because he just went huge and <laughs> killed them both. So that was less than ideal. And over here, um, the gold guys attacked first into the Terminators. The Terminators fail failed pretty much every save, so two died. Um, it didn't mean I could pull them out so they were no longer in combat with the grey ones. And then on the fight back, the Wraiths then made pretty much every single save. As in, yeah, literally every single save. I think I made six out of six, four up in front. Uh, so, yeah, that's not ideal. So, yeah, it's really interestingly poised now. Um, obviously, you can see from the scores, um, Necrons have got the lead. But if you look at the secondaries, obviously, Custodies have got the... Trying to keep the Terminators alive in the bank so that they can score the um, points for while we stand, we fight. So, yeah, very interesting game. Um... Going into Necro um, Custodes, turn three. Tell you what, this game is making my brain hurt. There are so many options and things to be thinking about for the Custodes especially. Um, come up with a plan. Um, so the big concern for the Custodes is can I get their deploy scramblers? So a lot of the things I've done are based around that. So I spent my last two CP to unleash the lions once again. This meant that three were still in combat. They have fallen back. That is because Terry is going to charge up and go to town on those wraiths. I have sent in my sword and board, well not even sword, just my vexilla, to try and hold up one of the units of wraiths. Hopefully I can do that um, and just stop them from being a pain. Um, the two that weren't in combat and initially, so therefore could just do what they wanted, are now hot-footing it down the middle of the field to try and get to the enemy deployment zone in time to deploy scramblers. Um, the one who has taken a bit of damage, he is currently deploying scramblers in the um, middle, um, and he came from just around here. Um, and the other one, yeah, he's also running up there. Um, He's fallen back over into that corner to make it safe for him to deploy in turn four. And then obviously turn five, hopefully one of these two will still be alive in order to deploy scramblers. So that's exciting, isn't it? Um, the shield captain has come across here. He's going to try and kill those cryptothralls 
and while shooting away the Void Dragon. I'm not too worried about the Void Dragon anymore, he can't do a huge amount. Um, and then Trajan and his friend are going to go kill some Skullpet Destroyers and the other two guys are kind of accepted their fate and are just going to keep slogging away into those warriors um, and keep them tied up so the warriors can't try and kill the running away um, uh, Terminators. So the interesting thing is here how do I split Terry's shots and that sort of thing? So I'll have to think about that. Um, I'm not going to roll anything on camera apart from the attempted murder of the Void Dragon because he's only got three wounds left. So, he's lined him up. Look at that, look at that camera. Beautiful. Oh, no. So, we're going to flak. So, three dice. Oh, no, it's not three dice. So, it's D3 shots for two. So, it's two dice. Twos, re-rolling ones. There's a one there, guys. There's two. Both hit. Strength seven against toughness seven. So we're looking for fours. He's not a vehicle, so I don't get to reroll. One wound. So that is one four up invulnerable save. Does he make it? He fails it. Now, do Necrons reroll that? I mean, you got the CP, so I think you probably do. So we're going to reroll it. Reroll the save. He's made it. It's a six. The Void Dragon lives to fight another day. Okay, well, with that shooting out the way, I'm going to play out the rest of the turn. And then um, when I come back, we'll, oh, I'll give you another update. Custody's turn is complete. Whoa. Okay. Um, so, obviously, when you left us all those seconds ago in your world, um, I just failed to kill the Void Dragon. Um, in terms of other shooting, nothing too exciting. Terry um, lit up the grey wraiths and the wraith just decided that today was not Terry's day and saved everything. Um, other than that, there wasn't really any excitement with the shooting. And then in terms of charging and fight phase, as expected, he polished off the... Um, Cryptothals, so that has removed basically the opportunity for Necrons to score deploy scramblers now because they are doing a lovely job of the warriors are doing a lovely job of tying up the Alaris, but if they fall back trying to get back to the deployment zone, the Alaris is going to keep chasing after them. Um, so yeah, that's kind of over with. So that's automatically a 10 point swing. So now um it's up to the Necrons to try and stop the Custodes with their Deploy Scramblers. Um, the Shield Vexilla was an absolute hero and saved all six um, Wraith wounds, so he didn't die. So he's managed to hold them up now, um, which is quite handy. Um, well, can they fall back and charge? Can't remember, maybe. I'll have to look that up. Um, so yeah, Necrons have got the lead still, going into battle round four, but oh, it's, it's a close one, guys. I wonder if your opinions change, because I really don't know. I've not tried to work it out. I'm just trying to play the game. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a close one. So we're up to uh, Necrons turn four next. Right, Necron movement phase for turn four is complete. Um, the race have been given the word that they cannot let the Terminators escape. So it turns out they can fall back and charge. So that's what they're going to be doing. So the gold boys are going to fire off there to um, take out white dude. And then the grey ones are going to be able to try and take out gold dude while still sitting on the objective. Um, other than that, I did spend some time thinking that I could fall back these warriors and then f in the next turn fall them back onto that objective and then try and steal it for, um, you know, treasure veils and stuff. But I just felt that between Terry shooting and these Terminators over there, I just felt that they would probably all die um, and it wasn't worth the risk when they're quite secure there. And the destroyers are going to try and kill Trajan. Scarabs are just going to sit there. Didn't know what to do with the Void Dragon. Don't think he's really got much to do. So it's time for the battle you've all been waiting for. Void Dragon versus Shield Captain. Unkillable Shield Captain. 
I know, it's very exciting. Um, so let's get that action started because, of course, we're at the end of the movement phase. Now, um, he's going to use his Catan powers. He has two. I haven't changed Sky of Falling Star yet, and um, that's obviously a complete waste of time because there's not a single unit um, which is more than one model in the enemy at the moment. So, again, that's a learning experience for me. I chose that power because that's what I would choose if I was to take this list to a tournament. But turn one, should have changed it. Didn't. That's my mistake. So that power doesn't do anything. However, I am going to use his Voltaic Storm. Get a dice, um, which is on a two up, D3 mortal wounds. Roll a four. So he's going to take D3 mortal wounds. Four one. Excellent. He gets to ignore it on a five. Not ignored. So still capture is da now down to eight wounds. We're then going to go to the shooting phase, and we're just going to do his shooting live on camera. That's not the right page. Ah, I had the right page. Okay. Um, one shot. Hitting on a two, it hits. Strength nine, threes. Fails to wind. Okay, come on, mate, you can do this. Are there any other shooting? Yes, there is. We've got the entropic lance into him as well. One shot, hitting on a three, hits. Wounding on a three, I think. Wounds. Three up invulnerable, made it. That is the shooting phase over with. So now we go into the charge phase. And I'm going to do things out of order here because I don't want to have to keep changing the camera and stuff. So, Void Dragon in two. Shield Captain. <gasps> it's a seven. He is in. Look at him. Oh, that's so epic. So epic. Okay, I should probably do the rest properly and then um, I will come back. Okay, all the charges have been successfully made. Um, over here, you can see that the um, banner bearer did heroically intervene. But enough of the waffle! Now, it turns out I miscarried how many CP. I still had a spare CP, so I've used that to cast another mortal wound power. I got trans-dimensional thunderbolt um, when I randomly rolled it, which did another two mortal wounds, and then one was safe with a feel no pain. Um, so, yeah, he's now on seven. Let's get that. But entropic strike has been employed so here we go can the void dragon stop everyone laughing at him it's a battle it's old as time so we've got five attacks okay they all hit strength nine so wounding on threes three have gone through that is minus four. So we have three sixes. Because we don't get our invun. They all fail. That is three d6 damage. Oh, seven wounds to get through. But remember, we've got the five up, feel no pain. Oh, that's looking good. That's, oh! The Void Dragon goes huge with 16 wounds. That's all she wrote, I'm fairly sure. Um, let's try our Feel No Pains. Um, cool, so he's made one so far. <laughs> I'm just taken four. Yeah, he's definitely dead. Okay. He's slain. He is slain. Well done. Big move for the Necrons there. He laughs. He gloats. He turns to face. The rest of the boards because he knows his job now is just to sit on an objective. So, I'm now going to do the rest of the rolling and uh, let you know how it goes at the end of the turn. Oh, it's starting to look quite tasty for the Necrons. Not only is the Void Dragon supreme, but they've now removed the Custodes opportunity realistically at deploying Scramblers. Both races did their job and finished off the two in the midfield. Um, so there isn't any way for these Terminators to get down to this deployment zone, so that's deploy scramblers over with, so neither side's gonna be earning deploying scramblers. Um, 
Uh, Trajan did his job and killed two destroyers and took nothing back. Um, other than that, that was it. Um, the Alaris over here managed to kill a, um, four after reanimation warriors. Um, they've not taken anything back yet. So yeah, I'm going to play out the um, Custodes turn next. You can see from the score, Nerkwans have got a pretty tasty lead. Um, and I'll play out turn four and then I'll see if the Custodes still have a chance at catching up afterwards. Right, the Custodes turn four is complete. Um, not too much happened. Um, these Terminators came across here and beat up some Wraiths. Um, Terry killed one Wraith with his shooting. The Wraiths have saved really well today. Um, I've just done some maths and um, there's now only mathematically one winner. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the necessary rolls to, dis to work out what the final score would be. And then I will come back to you with the debrief and the final result. Well, there we have it. It is the end of the game. What's your current score prediction? Because the final score was 60-52 to the Necrons. Well played, the Necrons. Um, really, really interesting game, wasn't it? Felt constantly back and forth, really hard to work out who was actually in control. Um, points being so close, it makes you think if Custodes had managed to de um, deploy Scramblers, then actually that would have been the game, wouldn't it? Um, so, do you, what do you think? Do you think Custodes should have um, unleashed the Lions turn one? Um, who knows? Is there anything you would have done differently from either side? I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts. Um, but no, I, I actually really enjoyed that battle. Um, when you're playing against an opponent and things don't go right, it's really easy to become frustrated. But when you're just telling the narrative and you're rolling the dice, you don't really mind if something whiffs or something rolls really well because you're not, well, you're trying not to be invested in either side. Um, so actually it's quite an enjoyable way of just playing and seeing what happens. So I would actually really recommend it. I had a great time. I was a bit concerned. How would it go? Would it be too tricky? But it was actually quite easy to put yourself in the mindset of each player on either side and not try and think about your opponent or knowing what their plans were and stuff. So yeah, definitely have a go if you have the resources at home to kind of do this because it was really good fun. Um, Obviously, this is designed to be a quick fire battle report. Um, before I started filming this, the goal was 30 minutes. So I have absolutely no idea if I've managed to keep to that or not. You're probably sat there going, 30, more like 50. Hopefully not, but we shall see. Um, but yeah, it's obviously it's not as um, aesthetically pleasing. It's designed to try and be quick fire, and, but still analytical. So please let us know in the comments what you think. Um, it'd be great to hear your feedback, any things you think should be done differently or changed. Um, and then in terms of the next one, what do you want to see? Do you want to see a rematch with a different mission? Maybe Custody's going first. Do you want to see a completely different Necrons or Custody list? Um, I actually have a Custody, a, a Necron list which I like to try, which is um, the, the old 8th edition vehicle style list. So let's give that a go. Um, so yeah, I, you let us know in the comments what you would like. But other than that, um, if you have enjoyed, please consider giving us a like and a subscribe. Hit the bell notification. All that jazz that everyone says on all their videos. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. Take care.